Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osuri. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, Jerry Tawai labeled the most successful Fijian Sevens player. FRA admits that traffic lights are manually controlled. An American couple's postmortem revealed. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. The Fiji Rugby Union has confirmed that it will have discussions with the government to find avenues of acknowledging and appreciating Jerry Thawai's commitment to the Fiji Airways national team. After Fiji's fourth series win, coupled with the Paris victory this morning, Thawai is now the most successful Fijian sevens player in history, with a total of 18 cup titles. Thawai has received praise from the Fiji rugby boss, who says the Nippi halfback will be rewarded for his loyalty. Ali Kimbia with the details. Is there a statue of him in Suva yet? I think it might be time. The heartbeat of our sevens team and his loyalty to his country is something the Fiji rugby union feels indebted to. Yeah, that's something we're considering uh, and we will have discussions with government on how to to commemorate the, uh, the loyalty and the service that is provided to, to Fiji. O'Connor has labeled Tuai as a true hero who always put his body on the line. And at times, you know, he suffers from injury and continues to play. And I just want to acknowledge and thank him for his dedication and passion and loyalty to Fiji. This will be one of the sweetest victory ever for all of the Fiji Sevens fans in Fiji and around the globe. Many have counted them out earlier in the season with a lot of mixed results, but yet our players came back strongly in the last two tournaments, winning our first ever back-to-back -back consecutive title and also our fourth World Seven Series title. The two most senior players in the Fiji team have also commended the small magician. We are so blessed uh, having uh, Jerry uh, with us. He's a motivator. Uh, he's a small man, but he has a big heart. But uh, to have Jerry around from uh, uh, this year, you know, it's motivates the boys. You know, the caliber, caliber players from him to learn from. Tuai has won 18 cup finals in the World 7 Series and he has lifted three World Series titles to under Ben Ryan in 2015 and 2016 and 2016 to 2017. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. It has been confirmed by the Fiji Roads Authority that all traffic lights around the country are being controlled manually. FRA Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says their staff alters the switch on various control boxes located near these lights on a regular basis. Moore admits that this is problematic for them, as some traffic lights change in a short span of time, and this is not monitored from their main office. Catherine Krishna reports that the FRA is doing all it can to introduce an automatic process. When it comes to traffic lights, those driving on the highway are given priority. However, this will soon change. So you may give 75% of the green to that route. Uh, and this is how you, you, you manipulate the traffic signals. Um, we have had issues in um, Nandi as well. So it's just a case of trial and error initially, then you set it up. But it, it all, it, the, the lag's built in sometimes, so you actually have to change it quite frequently and, and, and adjust it quite frequently. Moore says while no major accidents have been caused due to the sudden change of some traffic lights, it has created traffic congestion. It doesn't cause accidents because all it's doing is it's the amount of time the lights are on green, it varies. It still goes through the sequence of red, amber, green. So drivers should still be stopping when they're supposed to stop. Just means that instead of 20 vehicles getting through on a green change, there may be 12 or 15. Especially if you're going home in a rush and then you want to go but it's just like it goes automatically from green to red. It's street lights should be replaced and FRA should uh, take into consideration as uh, it's affecting both uh, vehicles and uh, pedestrians at the same time. Sometimes the lights in some places are very fast. It's walking. You know? There's only two cars cross, the light is on. However, in this case, there's definitely light at the end of the tunnel. We've just um, ordered a large consignment of new equipment for the traffic signals. 
GFRA is now planning to invest in digitalizing the system in the coming years. Moa says this would mean replacing many traffic signals around the country so that the new system can be effectively introduced. Catherine Krishnai, PC News. Meanwhile, the Fiji Roads Authority expects a good budget this year with major roadwork upgrades in the pipeline. Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says the upgrades include jetties, bridges, roads and crossings. Moore says they have submitted their budget estimates to the government and are hoping for a good outcome. The FRA was allocated $563.1 million in the 2018-2019 budget. $29.6 million of that was for operating expenditure, while $533.4 million was for capital expenditure. I can apply for what I want, I can apply for what I can use, but I have no control over the value. All I can say is whatever we're, we're allocated, we will prioritise public safety and we'll spend it wisely. Police have confirmed the cause of death of an American couple who was holidaying in Denarau Nandi over the weekend. The post-mortem results reveal that the couple who were in their 30s died due to an illness. Spokesperson Ananai Soro says they're now working with the health ministry to send samples from the post-mortem overseas for further testing. Naisoro adds they have been liaising with the U.S. Embassy on the progress of the case. She says investigation on this matter continues. Meanwhile, the Minister for Health says they have been working with relevant authorities. We've been in contact with the U.S. So we've been in contact with the U.S. And our team are actually in constant contact with them on a nearly twice daily basis now. The appropriate interventions have been done, uh, either by that area or by the facilities involved. Uh, and the, the specifics of it I'm not very aware of. Uh, also, I've just landed into the country. Uh, just two days ago. So I'm hoping by the end of today, once I've met uh, you know, uh, colleagues here and our staff and looked at the media release, that I could be better informed. Still to come, consumers voice concerns over EFL tariff and driver pleads not guilty to manslaughter. Details after the break. Consumers continue to raise concerns on the proposed tariff increase by Energy Fiji Limited. At the latest round of public consultations in Nasino today, most have raised the issue of hardship, but EFL says it needs money to ensure consumer demand is met. Sainani Boiler reports. 79-year-old pensioner Robert Ndrawanga says the proposed increase will be unaffordable for many. Well, I'm not for it. Yeah. I don't agree on the 70% increase because uh, first of all, because I'm not working and uh, it's like a burden to me again when, uh, when I have to pay that extra because as it is on what I'm paying now, I'm struggling. Others echoing the sentiments and say they are not opposed to the increment but the amount of the proposed increase. To me, not to, not to raise any penny on the public. But if they have to raise something, raise something like people can afford it, like 8%, 9%, you know, people can afford it might be, but when you ask asking more, that's pretty tough. The electricity demands increased by an average of 4% every year, and the increase proposed by EFL was to cater for these demands. The last electricity tariff review was done in 2011. We depend on computers, mobile phones and technology. So electricity is a very important commodity to ensure that business is as usual and keeps going. So we need to actually replace all these aging assets in a timely manner so that the reliability of electricity is always there. The next submission will be held in Lamis Parish Hall tomorrow. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. All proceedings in the Suva High Court will soon be video recorded. Acting Chief Justice Kamal Kumar says currently only one courtroom has the facility to conduct video recordings. However, this will soon change. Kuroi Tandulala reports.
Justice Kumar adds there's a team from Australia currently installing cameras in other courtrooms. The acting CJ highlights this process will bring greater transparency and convenience. Once all the videos are installed and are operational, one thing that will benefit the lawyers and, and the public at large is that you will be able to get a copy of the transcript within hours. Once the video uh, videos are all operational, um, the systems are working in good order, you'll be able to get transcript because transcript will be typed while the proceedings is go still going on in court. United Nations Development Program resident representative Vinit Bhatia says they also have plans to expand on the judicial infrastructure in Fiji. Strategies to decentralize court sittings so as to reach rural and remote areas, establishment of public information centers at all courts, installation of ramps and car parking allocation. The Chief Justice Kamal Kumar says the plan aims to improve citizens' access to justice, particularly for vulnerable groups. Kurit Andulala, FBC News. A 54-year-old driver involved in a car accident in Suva in March pleaded not guilty to manslaughter in the Suva High Court today. It is alleged that on March 30th, Pio Ratuanga lost control of the vehicle he was driving and veered off the road at Gardner Place in Asese Suva, causing the death of his passenger. The woman was pronounced dead on arrival at hospital. The state indicated that they will inform the defence this week whether they will rely on the caution interview. The matter has been adjourned to August 21st. There's been a lot of support and compliance shown by the public in regard to the seasonal ban on Kawakawa and Donu that came into place on Saturday. Principal Fisheries Officer for the Inshore Fisheries Management Division, Richard Viran, said people have heeded their advice and awareness sessions held months before the ban came into place. The ministry is grateful to those who have started pledging on social media sites that they will not sell, buy or eat the banned species for the next four months. The public is encouraged to post up pledges and pictures on social media to help spread the word. The seasonal ban ends on September 30th. Later in sports with Jamie, the IWF president refutes comments by those against Fiji hosting the IWF Junior World Championship. But first, Rachel joins us for the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Vodafone to showcase various products during FBC Trade Tech Show. And in growing Fiji, students of Vaturova gets new pond. Stay with us. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coroco, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM. All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altrigar. Leading business tonight, Vodafone Fiji plans to attract young people through the FBC Trade Tech Show. Head of Commerce and Corporate Affairs Shalendra Prasad says in the era of artificial intelligence, young people don't fully utilize the new technology. Prasad says at times smartphones are only being used for making video and voice calls, but people don't realize that many have greater processing capabilities than some computers. The FBC Trade Tech Show will be held from on the 27th to the 30th of June at the FMF Stadium in Gymnasium in Suva. So what we want to do through the trade show is offer to the younger generation the many opportunities that technology provides. There are applications, many uh, mobile phone apps, and people can develop these uh, apps and, and, and uh, make people's lives so much easier. The president of the Redison Hotel Group Asia Pacific has praised the team at the Redison Blue Resort Fiji. While visiting the resort over the weekend, the president says the resort in Fiji continues to be the benchmark for the other resorts in the region. Felipe Nakaso has more. The efforts put in by these staff at the Redison Blue Resort Fiji 
has been highly appreciated as the resort continues to perform at the very best level locally and internationally. At the same time, we have enough base demand now with this resort, a very good reputation in the market, and I believe owners are also happy with the results of the hotel. So it would be good perhaps on some other islands to create more of a circuit where guests can come here, stay some nights, then move to one of another property. The president has also stated that the local market is an area they also want to heavily focus on and getting Fijians to spend the night at their hotel. Happiness finds you in Fiji and I was reflecting on how I, I really I feel very blessed and privileged to be here and be part. I feel part of Fiji this time. I feel that uh, being part of Radisson Hotel Group, I'm now truly part of the community. The general manager for the Radisson Resort says that it was an honor to have the president visit them. If we are a benchmark for, for people, it means we are doing our job right and people are taking us as an example um, and, and the things, that, and innovations that we are doing and our standards and our way we, we, we develop our people and in our products. So yeah, it's a very good thing. The president also took the time out to meet with the staff and management during her visit. <laughs> Philippe and Icaso, FBC News. And we now join Sunifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the money world. Reviewing the action on our local stock market last week, the South Pacific Stock Exchange saw a total of 47,389 shares change hands in 99 transactions valued at more than $185,000 over the week. The large volume of trades is attributed to Fijian Holdings dividend reinvestment transactions whereby FHL shareholders are given an opportunity to use their dividend income to buy additional shares in the company. Eight listed companies recorded market activity and five of them recorded share price movements. Fiji Care Insurance Limited shares rose by five cents and concluded the week at $1.85. Paradise Beverages Fiji Limited shares were up by 87 cents to close the week at $14. RB Patel Group Limited shares rose by 17 cents to $7. Toyota Susho South Sea Limited shares recorded an upward movement of 32 cents to close at $7.72. Vision Investments Limited shares rose by 1 cent to close the week at $4.37. As a result of the various share price movements, the overall market capitalization increased by 0.5% and ended the week at $3.54 billion. That's a wrap from our local stock market, Vinaka. Thanks, Anifa. On to today's exchange rates as we set this morning. The foreign exchange markets continue to be volatile in light of so many economic tariff trades announced in the U.S. However, the Fiji dollar pretty much held its ground today. It slipped slightly against the Chinese yuan as well as the U.S. greenback and the Kina, but showed gains against the Aussie dollar as well as the Kiwi and the Euro as well as the Japanese yen. On to the commodities market, the price of oil dropped more than $3, closing at just under $53 per barrel. Gold has been on the rise now at 1,311 an ounce and silver closed at 1,465. An ounce. And in going Fiji tonight, students of Vatarova in Dakundrova have capitalized on assistance from the fisheries ministry to create their own fish pond, both for commercial purposes and food security for the boarding school. The pool was officially opened by the Assistant Minister for Rural and Maritime Development following the Government Services Expo last week. Alan Otharangaview reports. Over 3,000 baby malaria or milkfish were released by the Assistant Minister for Rural and Maritime Development, Charles Singarara, as he launched the Vaturova Koralau High School Fish Pond Project. This uh, project is for the school, it's for the food security and income generating so they can uh, fund their own, uh, since it's a boarding school, eh? so they can do fund for their own uh, consumption. Under the assistance, the Ministry of Fisheries provided the baby fish, but all other costs for the project was borne by the school itself. So should be ready in four months. So expecting about uh, two thousand five hundred dollars. Sell one fish, uh, uh, one fish, the one dollar. There are over fifty boarding students at the school, and they come from various villages along the Natawa coast. 
We want the boarders to eat fish sometimes. So when we heard that the expo was happening here, we put our request to the commissioner's office. And today we have this. This project will really help us feed the borders. Waturawa Koralau High School is the third school in the Northern Division to take up this project. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. And that's your business for tonight. Jamie's up next with sports. Thanks, Rachel, and good evening in sports tonight. Fijian Sevens wins its first Power Sevens title. And Melinder Nalangi named the World Rugby Sevens Rookie of the Year. There's some more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch FM. Mitch FM is hot. Singatoka, Mitch FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mitch FM rocks in Lombasa. I'm Sona Mena. Sorry, Jackson. Mitch FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Bubble Singer Line. Mitch FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Kritika from Jackson, Nasori. I love listening to Mitch FM here in Nasori. Mitch FM is hot. Mitch FM is hot. It was another masterclass performance by the Fiji 7 side against New Zealand in the final of the Paris 7s this morning. Fiji led from the start and never looked back to see a convincing 35-24 to 24 win over the Kiwis. Apani Sawangai Rondovu reports. Coming into the final with a will to win, the Fiji 7 side mesmerized the All Black 7s defense to score four tries. Sebu Mothanathangi, basketballs it, back over the top, whoa -oh! Balafa's away, and they are Mane, Mili Derinalangi, 12 nil Fiji from Bakrun and Billy Mickelson giving chase. Mickelson won't get there, and it is that might be the killer blow delivered by Fiji. After the breather, star playmaker Jerry Tua is spearheaded their runaway victory, dotting down for Fiji's final try. Good left to art. Oh, here he comes. Little Jerry. Jerry to art. The thrill machine. With Fiji lifting the Perry 7's title, the win also be embedded in the history books as Fiji's first ever back to back title in the World 7's series. Apinisa Wangarandobu, FBC Sports. The World 7 series couldn't have ended any better for the Fiji 7 side this morning. The pride of the nation claiming the World Series title and its first Paris Sevens Cup trophy. Kroy Tandolala reports. It's Fiji's fourth World Series title and their third in four years. And it's also the first time that they have won back-to-back -back titles in a leg. The national side won five out of ten tournaments this season. If you want to be a history maker, don't let this uh, moment go past you. Uh, I tell the boys, just give you all for another seven minutes and you'll be the history maker and uh, make uh, 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 people back home and your family proud of you. Coach Gareth Baber was given the Mark of Excellence Award in Paris. Last year we came here and we didn't. We were further in front, uh, but we didn't have the wherewithals to finish it off, and that was quite painful. Um, you know, you get a lot of learnings from that, and uh, certainly we've taken them this year, and I thought that uh, the back end of the season, you know, carrying on from Hong Kong, Singapore, London last week, and then to round it off as we did today, uh, it's pretty special and you know it's uh, all credit to everybody back home in Fiji everybody supported us and kept patient but most of all to the staff and this this quality outfit that we've got playing for us the government is working with the Fiji rugby union to decide on the scale of celebrations to honor the Fiji Airways national side Corey Tandolala FBC Sports after a stellar debut season for Fiji Melin Dernalangi has been named the World Rugby Sevens Rookie of the Year the former Queen Victoria School student played in 55 out of 60 matches this season, scoring 17 tries. The 20-year-old made 45 offloads in the series, just four short of Vilmoni Botitu. Amniasi Tui Mamba and Botitu were also no nominated for the Rookie of the Year award. Previous Fiji Sevens recipients of the award include Jerry Tuwai and Eroni Sao. Meanwhile, Vilmoni Botitu won the DHL Impact Player of the Year award after clocking up 356 points. Four Fiji Sevens players were named in the 2019 HSBC Dream Team at the end of the Paris Sevens this morning. 
PG7's offload specialist and rookie of the year, Melin Dernanalangi, Jerry Tuwai, DHL Impact Player of the Year, Wilmoni Motitu, and winger Amniasi Tui Mamba were accorded the honor. Ben Pinkelman, Stephen Thomason, and Folau Niwa of USA were the other three named in the team. And we now cross live to Kuroi Tandulala. Kuroi, the whole country is eager to welcome the boys home. What can they expect arriving into the country? Yes, JB, it, it, the whole country is in a great mood for a double celebration after the Fiji 7 spectacular performance in Paris this morning. Now, FBC Sports spoke to the Fiji Rugby Union Chief Executive earlier, John O'Connor, to ask him on their plans to celebrate the Fiji 7 success. To this, he responded that they will soon meet with the Ministry of Sports to decide on the scale of the celebration. However, the main priority, as stated by the Minister for Sports, Parveen Kumar, is for the team to return to the countries and for the players to return home to their families. The Fiji 7 side is expected to arrive in the country on Wednesday and Kumar is thanking the players as well as the entire staff of FRU for their commitment, dedication and their support for the Fiji 7 side winning the overall series title as well as scooping five tournament titles this season. Jamie. International Weightlifting Federation President Thomas Ajan has refuted comments by the, those against Fiji hosting the IWF Junior World Championship. Ajan says that the Federation has full faith in weightlifting Fiji and the Fijian government. He says that Fiji is defying any skepticism and he thanked weightlifting Fiji President Atma Maharaj for his devoted service by living up to the challenge of a world event and thus confirming Fiji as a strong weightlifting nation in a global context. Meanwhile, the championship continues at the FMF Gymnasium until this Saturday with 248 athletes from 47 countries participating. I send a message for everybody who don't accept that everything will be okay here and I send a message we trust in the Fiji weightlifting, we trust in the Fiji government and how you prepare this whole, prepare this championships is absolutely okay. The Vodafone National Women's Football Team is trying to find out as much as they can about the Singapore women's team ahead of their Tri-Nations match. Coach Marika Rondu says they are wary of the threat the Singaporeans bring to the competition and are trying their best to prepare for their structure of play. With Vanuatu, we are pretty, uh, we are pretty aware of their capabilities and their abilities. Uh, as for Singapore, we have to dig deep and uh, try and uh, do more research on them, uh, watch uh, some videos of their game. So we managed to get some information out, uh, and we're working towards uh, mapping our plan for these two games. Today's play of the day is from Game 2 of the NBA Finals. The Raptors' Pascal Siankum throwing down a huge slam dunk. Compliments of a Fred Van Fleet alley-oop. That's it from Sports Tonight. You can join Angie later on with weather. And in the world of the weird and wonderful, a look at the world's most expensive potatoes. Details coming up. मैं नवनीत नन नंबोलुंबुआ से जैसे प्रेनी नोट मशहूर है वैसे रेडियो फिजी टू भी सभी जगह मशहूर है रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन सीमा नकाशी से मैं रेडियो फिजी टू पसंद करती हूँ सुनने के लिए रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन मैं हूँ अंकल किंग सिंगापुर टाउन के टैक्सी ड्राइवर जैसे रग्बी फेम We take a look at what's redefining home Wi-Fi with its first intelligent Wi-Fi system offering unparalleled speed, security and control. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Welcome to yet another week and month. Hope your weekend was exciting, especially after Fiji 7's team victory. It wasn't hot or anything today, but rather the cool and blissful day is summing up our Monday. Now, taking a look in the west, humid, sunny weather. 
Eastwards from Pekha Barasuba, gloomy and very cool. The evening will see some showers. And up north, more of the same sunny conditions. At sea, south east winds 15 knots, moderate seas. For the tides, high tide at 12.37 a.m. and low tide at 6.50 a.m. Sunrise at 6.33. For tomorrow, here's the good part. Rain will taper off, which means clearer conditions ahead. Tomorrow's temps, majority centers will see high 20s. And looking further on to Wednesday, wonderful weather ahead, nothing of the sort to disappoint you. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, what do you think of Fiji's overall performance in this year's World 7 Series? They did very well, so now they are aiming for the goal they do it, they won the cup. And uh, plus from uh, back to back in Hong Kong. So I think that uh, maybe the uh, government going to give a uh, holiday, public holiday for Fiji. Fiji's um, performance uh, last night and this morning, it was so lovely, fantastic, and we just can't wait to see them home with the three trophies that they are bringing in home. They did well last night and we enjoy so much for their playing. Very good performance. The way they play, it's like a rocket. Oh, so amazing, just over the moon. Fiji's performance was good, was good. you liked it. Uh, I know Gareth Bebo worked out with the boys. Uh, Fiji did uh, as proud uh, when they won the game against America. It was indeed good and uh, Fiji performed very well uh, and we were watching the final yesterday and uh, it was just too, uh, too good we would say. It was really good. We feel very proud that uh, Fiji won back to back that is. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, we take a look at the most expensive potatoes in the world. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Jerry Tawai labelled the most successful Fijian Sevens player. FRA admits that traffic lights are manually controlled. An American couple's post-mortem revealed. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment, last week we had asked, should Gareth Baber maintain the core of the Sevens team for the Olympic Games? 57% said yes. This week we're asking, should our Sevens players be given cash incentives after winning the World Seven Series? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day sent in by Ben Yambaki, a beautiful sunset taken from Thumbo in Lakemba in the Lao province. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. Follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news, hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, good night. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in the cash on the walk around and bullet fib. Number two, I am a serie. Oh, yeah, was it says a lambasa and the teletain of our room and a bullet fib. Number two, and serie. We have a family, a quarter town of Hinatoka, Teletakina of our room and a bullet fib. Number two, and a serie. Number two, and a serie. Never go find in a town of Singatoka, get on the Teletakanambula FM, number two, and a serie. Bula FM, number two, and a serie.